What's up everyone? Today is Monday. Today is YouTube Live Day. So I want to talk about a couple things before I get into the main topics of this video, which is trade recaps, summer trading, making a plan and everything. So uh, we are planning to do a massive four year anniversary meetup in Utah. Uh, we're not releasing too many details yet to the public, but this is going to be 100% free. No tickets, nothing. So mark your calendars, mark your calendars, August 19 to 21. Uh, SLC Utah uh, for our meetup, right? So that's number one. So if you guys want to meet me, Val, the entire MIC team, this is our four year birthday that we're celebrating in Utah. The reason why we chose Utah is because it's relatively inexpensive to get to. So whether you're on a budget or whether whatever it may be, it's gonna be very easy. You know, we have hotels blocked off, whatever. So within the next week or two, we're gonna be releasing a little bit more details on it. But as for the dates, they are confirmed August 19 to 21, guys. So. That's number one. Number two is before I get into trading, I want to talk about uh, a little bit of perspective. Okay. So as you guys know, this is being recorded in June 27 of 2022. We are in the middle of a bear market. Okay. And the thing is guys that, you know, when the, the pandemic happened and the world was locked down, uh, everyone flocked to the stock market. Everyone flocked to the stock market because that's how gamblers got their fix. They were seeing crazy moves in the markets because of the Fed printing money. And it got a lot of people excited and turned a lot of you know average guys into day traders. And what ended up happening is over those two years of 2020 and 2021, people thought that day trading was easy. You know, people thought that you know you just show up to the market, you close your eyes, you hit the buy button, and all of a sudden you're rich. And what ended up happening is over the course of 2022, that all changed. Easy money started to disappear. Traders that made millions of dollars in the last two years now have lost millions of dollars. And it kind of reminded it kind of reminds you how to be appreciative of every little detail. You know, over the last two years in 2020 and 2021, I think I made over four and a half million dollars, maybe five million dollars in those last two years, which is unbelievable, right? Great amount of money. And the problem is that sometimes when you make that type of money, you kind of lose focus on the things that are very important in life, whether it be friends, family, loved ones, anything. Your goal turns into how the hell am I going to make more money, right? I want to make more money. I want to make more money. And money is like a drug. It's a drug because the more you have of it, the more you want it. And the less of you have of it, the more you want it. So it never ends, right? So the reason why I'm bringing up this this uh, scenario of the bear markets or whatever it is to remind you guys to be appreciative of, you know, just showing up every day and making money. It doesn't matter if it's a hundred dollars. It doesn't matter if it's ten thousand dollars. Doesn't matter if it's a million dollars. As long as we get to show up and make even ten dollars on the day trading, that is more freedom than most people have. Right. The reason why we get into trading is to have freedom. The reason why we get into trading is to, you know, live a life outside of the screens and outside the stock market, outside of everything, right? But here we are every single day trading and trading and trying to make more money, right? And the reason why I bring this up is because it was my youngest brother's birthday yesterday. He's 16 years old, he turned 16 years old and something very interesting happened. So my brother is a very big basketball guy. He loves playing basketball, loves the Bulls, loves all this stuff. And for his birthday, I asked him because I'm, I asked him, like, what do you want for your birthday, bro? Whatever you want, like, I got you, like, I'll figure it out. So what he asked for his birthday is he wanted a pair of sneakers, right? He wanted a pair of sneakers, and there were some Kobe sneakers, whatever the hell they may be. And he saw the price tag on them. He saw the price tag was, like, $1,000 on these shoes. I guess they're limited edition, whatever bullshit it may be. He's like, oh, my God, this is so much money. Can you please find me a pair of shoes that's $100? So I'm thinking in my head, okay, like, wow, that's crazy, like, like he doesn't want me to spend money. He wants me to be able to be a little bit conservative so that, you know, even though he might not get exactly what he wants, he's letting me get him something a little bit cheaper. So that was the first thing I was like, wow, that's freaking amazing. He's such a good kid, right? And then I said, because he did that, because he was so kind and because he was so generous with me, not wanting me to spend a bunch of money on the shoes, I obviously got him the expensive pair of shoes, right? I could afford it, thousand dollars is not really, crazy thing for me. So I got him this pair of shoes, right? And I ended up giving it to him. And the th he told me something that like changed my life, right? It changed fucking 27 years old, almost 28 years old. He told me something that like really blew my mind. I give him the pair of sneakers and he freaks out. He's at freaks out because he knows how expensive they are. He wanted them. They're really hard to get. 
and he told me, he looked at me and he goes, I can't wait to make money so that I could get you a gift like this. And in my head, I was like, holy fucking shit. Like here I am like trying to make tens of thousands of dollars a day. Here I am trying to make millions of dollars a day. And this small act of kindness that getting him a sneaker that he was unexpected, getting him something that he wasn't uh, expecting, like kind of opened up his eyes now to the value of hard work, right? Cause this kid is a 16 year old kid. He doesn't want to work. He just wants to go outside and play basketball, right? And I don't blame him. Let him go fucking play games. Let him do whatever the hell he wants. But that act of kindness probably changed his entire life of what the meaning of work is. The meaning of work is to be able to have these experiences and have these moments with your loved ones. And maybe at 16 years old, he did not realize how important working was to be able to accomplish those things. So the fact, I don't need anything. I have fucking everything, right? I could go, I, I'm very blessed. I could go buy whatever the hell I want right now. There's pretty much no budget on whatever I want I could buy. But for him, his mentality changed and said, I can't wait to start making money to repay this back to you, right? So this is just a reminder, guys, that when you're making money trading, whether you're making money in a day job, whether you're making money something is, don't keep it all to yourselves. Try to share it with your loved ones. Try to share it with your family because you never really know what a small act of kindness could change someone's life and change someone's perspective forever. So him telling me that, a 16 year old kid telling me that, really just like opened up my eyes to, you know, maybe I should be doing more, right? Maybe I should be doing more to whether it be give back or whether, you know, it's something. So I want to try to, you know, make it more of my goal and make it more of my job to just appreciate everything a lot more, right? And I'm a very appreciative person. I'm very a grateful person. I'm very everything. It's just sometimes that when you get caught in the rat race of trading and waking up and making money and losing money, you oftentimes forget how important it is to just appreciate your family, right? Your friends, your loved ones. So I was very proud of my younger brother for saying something like this. And it really showed me how much of a good kid that he is. And it kind of almost gave me a purpose again to, you know, use my wealth, use my money to try to find more ways to give back, right? Whether it be taking care of friends, whether it be taking care of family, those that deserve it, right? Not just blindly giving money to a fucking random people, but those that are in need of it, I want to kind of do a better job of improving. So a gift for my brother turned into a gift for myself. So that's just one thing on perspective I want you guys to remember is the markets are not easy right now. So obviously it's not crazy to make money, but you know, when things improve, when things get better, remember that, you know, it's not all about us and we will be able to take care of the people that matter to us in our lives. So anyway, that's one thing I want to talk about. Let's get into the main topics of the day, which is trading. Okay. So every single day, guys, I post a watch list. I post the watch list every single day because those are the exact plans that I'm trading every single day. So the watch list always starts with a low hanging fruit. And what the low hanging fruit is, is stocks that were broken on day one that we looked to short on day two, because after day two, I mean, after day one, the stocks are not really interesting anymore. So one of the low hanging fruits on the watch list today was BHAT. If you guys pull up the watches, it's for MIC members only. You'll notice that on BHAT, our plan was to short at 250. It went up to 250 and went down to about $2.20. So you can make over 10% return in an hour, right? The other stock that was on the watches for the low hanging fruit was TBLT. TBLT was a stock to trade around three bucks and now it's at 270, another 10% winner. So those are the best trades on the day. So if you're an MIC member, your number one goal should be trading these low hanging fruit stocks only because those are the highest probability setups. Those are the stocks that you could make the most money on. And those stocks pretty much because it's a day two, their locate price is cheaper and everything is more affordable. Now what happens to day one stocks? So day one on TBLT, right? Which was on Friday, right? Today's day two. Our plan is we notice support around $3.40. And what my plan was on TBLT on day one is if it breaks that key support of $2, I mean $3.40, it becomes a short, breaks that level and goes all the way from 340 to like 260, right? 
So what we like to do on these day one stocks is we like to avoid them until we identify a key support, a key area to break down. When that level breaks down, then we look to attack. So today's stock was NRSN, guys, NRSN. So NRSN was pumped this morning, right? It's already check mark, pump, okay? It was running and running and running, and pre-market, my thought process was if this stock breaks around $2.40, right? This is around 9 a.m. before the stock went crazy. I said, if the stock breaks under $2.40, then it looks like it's gonna become a short. If it does not break under $2.40, you probably should avoid it short because it's gonna trap some people. So NRSN, you know, ramped up 250, 260, 270, 280, 290, 3, 310, 320. At this point, I'm not interested, right? Because it didn't break down the key support and it kept running and it's a day one play. But I had a signal. So something changed on this stock, right? So when we're trading these stock size, we're always looking for some sort of signal that tells us, okay, the trend has changed, the trend has reversed, something different is happening here. On NRSN, I think the candle was at, give me a second, candle was at, 9.53 a.m. So if you go back to NRSN at 9.53 a.m., you will see a high day rejection and you will see a stuff candle on volume. So when I saw that, that was my first initial signal that the trend is changing. So after I saw that signal, I made a plan for the members in MIC because this is the plan that I'm gonna be using. My plan was if $3 whole dollar support breaks down after this stuff move, I will look to short at $3 and I will look to short at 290 with a stop at the high of the day. That's about a 20% size trade. And what I said after that is I said if 280 breaks down, which is previous resistance from pre-market acting as support, then I'll look to go at maybe around 30 to 50% size. So I avoided it all the way on the way up I waited for the signal, which was the stuff candle and rejection. I waited for the continuation for it to go lower, and then I shorted it, right? And now, as I'm recording this video, it's at around like 260, 270. You know, I covered some earlier around 258 to lock in some profits. I'm probably gonna reshort some on the bounce. But the reason why I bring up this trade is because it was an avoid until we saw a signal. When we saw a signal, we start to attack it. And this is the importance of making a plan. My plan was very simple. If it stuffs and breaks, I'm gonna short the breakdown and I'm gonna cover it high of the day. If it continues to act weaker, if it continues to go in my favor, then I have the ability to size in more. So that's kind of how we like to play these trades on day. The main stock of the day was the low hanging fruit stocks. That's how we make our easy money, right? The harder stocks are the day one stocks, but we still could trade them as long as we see a signal and as long as we see a confirmation. In this specific scenario, the confirmation was the stuff candle and the break under three and the break under VWAP. All of these signals and a pump told me, okay, maybe the stock is gonna go lower. And right now, again, as I'm saying, it's trading around 270. You know, I covered some at 258 earlier to be able to add back at 270, 280, and 290. So after this video is over, I'm looking to add back a little bit more short for an eventual move back under 250, right? So today was a solid day for members. Today was a solid day. And, you know, a lot of people are not making money in this bear market. You know, people that made five, six, seven, eight million dollars last year are down $10 million this year. Traders that, are you know, experts are now down millions of dollars on the year. And it's actually kind of crazy to say, but I'm pretty sure MIC is the only community that's fucking green this year, right? And the thing is, if we are able to be green in a bear market, wait until you see what we could do in a bull market. Because if your mentor, if your community, if your chatter, whatever it may be, could only make money when things are great in a bull market, you're doomed. You need to learn how to make money in all different market cycles. And that's where we are today. We are in a bear market, in a summer cycle, and we're still making money every single day. So again, guys, this is a live video. So if you guys have any questions, let's do a brief audience Q&A here and let's go through it, right? So how'd you guys do today? How'd you guys trade today? Did you guys trade a low hanging fruit today? Did you guys get chopped up on NRSN today? And the thing is on NRSN, when we said that this is not a short, a lot of members went long. They went long on the way up and then they flipped short on the way down. So don't think that MIC is just a short bias room. 
We go long and we go short, right? We teach day trading, swing trading, large caps, options, every single type of niche in the market. We teach. And if you want to learn more about our strategy, guys, we have a free webinar at myinvestingclub.com slash webinar. This is for non-members only. This is about a one hour free course that we put together that teaches you our strategy. So that's at myinvestingclub.com slash webinar if you have any questions about that. So now let's go through the brief audience Q&A. Can you talk about using volume profile to see who's stuck and where? So volume profile is what bao has been using and posting in the room. And basically it just shows where the volume at the specific price levels. So let's say NRSN traded at most of the volume at $2.80. That means that if it's under $2.80, then it becomes, you know, our edge. And Bao was just telling me to stop talking about it, so I'm gonna stop talking about that, sorry. Uh, managing risk with the current market. Happy as I met my goal this past month. Guys, in this market, if you're struggling, just size down. This is not the market to get rich in. This is the market to stay alive in and wait for our ideal setups to come back. How can you tell if a stock is basing or stuck in a range or getting ready to break up or down? Well, it depends. If a stock is making higher lows, then chances are it's probably gonna bounce higher. If a stock is making lower highs, chances are it's probably gonna go lower. So use the uh, clues from the chart. How did you know that NRSM was a pump? NRSM was being pumped by a chat room on YouTube. So this rev is tanking. Shit. Hey guys, any 4th of July deal to join MIC? I mean, we just had a really big promotion, guys, that we ended last week to join Lifetime. I mean, to be honest, we're not really doing any promotions right now. If you want, you could try to email Tosh at myinvestingclub.com, T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com, and we'll see if we can work on something. But, you know, we're not really planning on doing any promotions because we just did a really big one that we're not probably gonna bring back. Um, any other questions, guys? Remember, this is a live video, so I'm gonna see uh, your questions and we could go on from there. Do you care about short float percentage when shorting? Yes, guys, a high short float means that it is very dangerous to short because that means that shorts need a way to get out, right? So keep this in mind, guys. A high short flow just means be very careful on the short side. The edge is to the long side if a stock has a high short flow because all those shorts need to cover and push the stock higher. Also, guys, I'm thinking about doing more of these uh, Monday videos, but I'm thinking of doing maybe on Thursday and Friday as well to see if I could give you guys some more content, but just something I'm playing around with. What percentage is an avoid for you? I would say anything over like 40% of the short float is an avoid. What was the stuff candle you mentioned? I mentioned earlier, guys, that's, we can't, we can't give away all the strategies, but we have a lot of free videos on this stuff. On the big first red dates, how do you determine your position sizing? Trying to get a better at growing account through the big place. So uh, that's actually a good question, guys. So what you have to keep in mind is you should not be using the same size on every single trade in the stock market. If you're, I mentioned this, I mentioned this because Bao was in Korea, so I don't know if he knew this story, but I mentioned this. You have to think about trading as when the odds are in your favor. So let's say we're making a bet if Bao is going to get drunk today or not, okay? Let's say Bao is at Disney World today. There's maybe a 50% chance he gets drunk at Disney World. But if you tell me Bao's at the club, there's a couple Asian girls and there's some Hennessy, I know there's a 100% chance that Bao's gonna get drunk. So on that 100% chance that Bao's gonna get drunk, that's when I'm gonna bet heavy. Not on the 50%. On the 50% setups, maybe it might work, but that doesn't give me enough of an edge to bet heavy. I'm waiting for those A plus setups when Bao's at the club to get drunk and that's when I'm gonna size in. So for a first red day, I'm waiting to size in on those days only, extreme size, because those are 99% winners, whether than trading random stocks, it's 50% winners, right? So when the odds are more in your favor, you get to use more size. Does that make sense, guys? 
So I think I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. If you guys have any additional questions that I didn't get to answer on this uh, live video, please leave a comment in the video and I will personally go in and I will reply to those comments. If you want to get a taste of MIC and you are a non-member, go to myinvestingclub.com slash webinar. And remember, guys, if you're if your community could only make money in a bull market, you guys are doomed because this bear market may continue even longer. What happens if this market continues for a year or two years and your mentor keeps losing millions of dollars? You're dead, guys. So I'll see you guys back in the room. Uh, hopefully you guys learned a lot today and I'm going to get back to answering member questions. So thanks, everyone.